Hello guys, good day to you. Welcome to our class for today. This is Noble My Science Tutors Online and I remain your online physics uh, instructor. I'm Otobo Michael. Please, if you are just visiting our channel, in this channel what we'll do here is we'll try to make physics to be as simple as possible to you. So welcome to this channel. Then if you are a returning subscriber, you are also welcome. And thank you for visiting our channel. Please continue to give us a like, give us a thumbs up. And if you are just coming in, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new uh, lecture, YouTube will notify you. Right? If you have any issues, you can reach us through the WhatsApp uh, link that is directly under this uh, video. All right? So please get your writing materials ready. For our class today, we are looking at application of electromagnetic induction. Applications of electromagnetic induction. We have treated as electromagnetic induction. So we are looking at how is the phenomenon applied in your everyday life. Okay, so that is what we are going to be looking at today. And underneath, we'll look at um, alternative current generator and direct current generator. Right, so we'll look at alternative current generator and direct current generator. Then we'll also um, look at um, measurement of uh, direct currents and how we can make a how we can convert an alternative generator to a DC generator. Okay, so those are the areas we are going to cover in this particular lecture. Alright, so if you are there, please let us just let us go straight to our class for today. Okay, so as I said, we are looking at application of electromagnetic induction. So under this, we know that there are some machines that convert electrical energy to mechanical energy or vice versa so any machine that converts uh, mechanical energy into electrical energy or electrical energy to mechanical energy is called a dynamo yes they are called dynamo and we have simple example of them you have your generator your generator converts mechanical energy to electrical energy all right, while your pumping machine, the machine that you use to pump water at your home, your electric motor, that one converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. So those two machines, they are examples of a dynamo. Okay, so when a simple dynamo converts mechanical energy to electrical energy, it is called a generator. And when it converts electrical energy to, mecha to mechanical energy, it is called an electric motor. So we have two types of generators. We have the alternative current generator, and then we have the direct current generator. All right, so these are the two types of generators that we have. So the alternative current generator, remember, we have treated the electric motor when we treated the application of a magnetic uh, field okay when we treated application of magnetic field we looked at the electric motor and there too we also looked at um, the moving coil galvanometer is that okay so we have treated that and then we drew this uh, a diagram that is similar to what you are seeing right on your screen now okay we had a diagram that's similar to what you have on your screen now. but if you look at this diagram very well this is a diagram of a simple ac generator so this ac generator consists of one the armature the armature is this coil right then is a rectangular coil consisting of a large number of tons of insulated wire one on the laminate soft iron core so this is the armature then you have the magnetic feed that is created by these two magnets then you have two slip rings 
these two rings when we discuss the electric motor we mention split ring but this time around we are mentioning slip ring slip rings so if you look at this connection you find out that one arm of the armature is connected to one of the slip ring the other mass is the other arm is connected to the other um, um, other part of the slip ring was oh, that okay so we have to slip ring slip ring not split to slip ring then you have two stationary carbon brushes that are that presses very lightly on the slip ring slip rings are not commutators it is split rings that are commutators so please take note the electric motor has a split ring commutator but the ac generator doesn't have a split ring commutator it has slip ring slip ring okay so this waveform here this graph here gives you the waveform of an ac generator all right it gives you the waveform of an ac generator now for the generator how does it work so when the armature this is the armature right when it rotates at a steady speed on the on its axis in the magnetic field of this electromagnet it cuts through the magnetic field or magnetic lines of force that exists between the north and the south pole is that okay it causes through the lines of force as a result an EMF is produced in the terminals of the core by electromagnetic uh, induction. All right. So an EMF is produced by our as a result of electromagnetic induction. Don't forget that electromagnetic induction is the production of voltage or electric current in a conductor whenever there is a relative motion between the conductor and the magnetic field of a magnet so when this armature moves in this um, magnetic field right an emf is produced due to electromagnetic uh, induction that's okay so an alternative voltage used with from is as shown above is obtained are determined by means of these uh, carbon brushes and slip rings all right so it is these carbon brushes and split rings or uh, slip rings that make us to have an alternative uh, an alternative an alternative voltage that has this type of uh, waveform so this wave gives you a complete circle this is a complete circle this is one circle one circle all right so this is uh, uh, the waveform for alternative current now there is an equation for the waveform of alternative current okay there's an equation that is used to determine the magnitude of the emf that is produced by an alternative uh, generator so that is what we want to derive now equation for the waveform of alternative current now if uh, if you assume that this is your um this is your core okay this is your core that is in the magnetic field so i'll let this core assume that this core rotates in the magnetic field b and then there's a normal to the core that makes an angle theta with the magnetic field as shown in this diagram and then the flux through the coil is given by a b that's area times uh, magnetic flux times cos theta okay is given by this, this equation one now if n is the number of turns on this particular coil then the magnetic flux is given is given by the number of turns times a b times a which is the area times uh, magnetic flux density cos theta now if the coil 
now turns with a steady angular velocity given by this then you know that angular velocity when we treat angular velocity with the angular velocity is equals to theta it's angular displacement all over time ticking that is angular velocity so this can also be written as uh, the difference differential of that of the theta all over differential of time okay so if we have this then we have that induced emf is equals to minus the differential of the flux magnetic flux all over differential of uh, time okay so that is what what we have here now if you have that this uh, this equation 2 can be written as can equation 2 cannot be written like this okay since we've said that this is equals to this remember that we said that this is equals to n a b cos theta so which means that the is used emf will be equals to this so this we can also write as number of tons minus i mean multiplied by area times flood density or multiplied by d dt cos theta now d dt cos theta is equal to sine theta when you differentiate cosine you have sine so this is differential of cosine so you have sine so this is what that's why we have this sine theta here okay and don't forget that d theta over dt is equal to angular velocity so you can equally substitute angular velocity into this part of the equation to give you this now when theta is equal to 90 degree we know that sine theta is equal to 1 so the equation now becomes this and this is equal to the maximum value of induced emf which occurs when the coil is parallel to the feed direction so the induced emf the maximum value of the emf is this all right now if you put this equation c into equation 5 if we put this to equation 5 we're going to have this we're going to have this equation because where you have your um, where you have your this is equation 5 right equation 5 is this and a b angular velocity sine sine theta then equation c is equals to n a b angular velocity is equals to maximum uh, induced emf so if we substitute this into this equation we're going to have that emf is equals to eo sine theta okay so and uh, we know that uh, theta from our equation of uh, um, angular motion we know that uh, angular velocity equals to theta all over t and that theta will now be equals to angular velocity times uh, time so if you substitute this one into this equation you are going to have that your induced emf is equals to eo sine this t angular velocity so this equation is the wave equation for alternating generator all right 
So this equation is the weak equation for turning the generator and I need you to please take note of this equation. Very, very important. All right. So that is the equation for the waveform that is produced by an alternating uh, generator. All right. All right. So let's solve a question that we at least um, relate some of these things that we have discussed right so this question says that um, a circuit has an area of a circuit has an area of 0.4 meters square and consists of 50 loop of wire if the loops are twisted and allowed to rotate at a constant angular velocity of 10 radians per second in a uniform magnetic field of flux density 0.4 tesla the magnitude of the induced voltage is what? This is a jam question actually. This is a jam question. So if you understand the question, we would know that uh, E, the magnitude of the induced voltage or induced EMF is equal to number of ton times area times uh, flux density times uh, angular velocity. Okay. So for this particular equation, you are given number of tons to be 50. The area is given to you to be 0 0.4 meter squared. The area is given to you to be that. Then you have the angular velocity is given to you to be 10 radians per radians per seconds. Then you have uh, magnetic flow density to be 0 0.4 Tesla. So once you have that, you only substitute into this particular equation. So you now have 50 multiplied by the area with 0 0.4 multiplied by uh, the flow density, which is also 0 0.4. Then you multiply by 10, which is angular velocity. Alright, so by the time you multiply all this out, you are going to have a 80 as your, as your induced EMF. Okay, so the application of this equation is quite simple and I, I, I want to encourage you to check for other questions so that you have a mastery of it. Okay, so that is that for that particular question. Alternative currents, we discuss uh, alternative generator. So alternative current is a current which changes continually in a direction while passing through a conductor. So alternative current goes up and down in a it changes in a, a continually in the in passing through a conductor. Then there are some instruments that are used to measure alternative current. One of them is a hot wire ammeter and it uses the heating effect of a current. Then you also have the moving coil ammeter. We're using the magnetic field of current and the moving coil galvanometer to which a rectifier is attached to convert the AC to a DC. Okay, so these are some of the instruments that are used to measure alternative currents. So now I want to look at direct current generator. Okay, so as I said, if you if you have gone through our lecture on the application of electromagnetic field, you will see that we discussed this when we talked when we talked on an electric uh, motor. So the electric motor actually is more or less like the DC generator. Okay, but in this particular instance, this one is a generator. All right, so a direct current generator is one which always which allows current to flow in one direction, even though it may vary in value. So this allows current to actually flow, allows current to flow in one direction, even though it may vary in value. Okay. Even though the current may vary in value, but it allows the current to flow in one direction. All right, so an AC generator can actually be converted to a direct current generator by just changing 
this so if you replace the split the slip ring in the ac generator to split ring this is another split ring so please you need to check the difference between this drawing and that other one that we just discussed that one has slip ring but this one has split ring commutators the ac generator does not have commutator it has slip rings so you can convert the ac generator to a dc generator by replacing this two slip ring with a single split ring commutator as in electric motor so this is a split ring commutator in a dc generator all right then a direct current is obtained by connecting a split ring known as commutator to an external resistance or load by split rings commutator by split ring called commutator okay that's what we've said the rings help to reverse the connection to the external resistance in every half turn of the coil so that the current produced flows through the coil in the same direction okay so this one the current flows in the same direction okay so that is just how to convert an alternative generator to a dc generator all right so this is your direct current uh, generator So from the generators, for you to produce a bigger EMF, that is induced EMF in the AC and DC generator, what you do is that the armature should be, uh, should have large number of tons in the coil. The coil should be worn on a soft iron core so as to increase the magnetic flux to the coil. A strong magnet to produce a strong mag magnetic feed should be used. They increase the speed of rotation of the core we also have to give you larger inducer emf now you can actually compare the two we've discussed the dc, the DC generator and the electric motor if you look at the two they actually have the same drawing okay so both are identical in construction yeah both of them the identical in construction that's what i've mentioned before then a dc generator can, can be made to run as an electric motor right you can make it to run as an electric motor if a battery is connected to the generator so if you connect a battery to the generator you can make the generator to run as an electric motor all right then if the armature of the electric motor is made to rotate then it can actually produce it will act as a dc generator delivery current at the terminals so when the electric motor is used as a generator it produces an emf in opposition to that applied known as back emf so back emf is an emf that opposes the one that is that is applied to the system that is what is called back emf so guys this is um where we are trying the cutting on this particular topic and uh, please you need to review it and then look at some areas where you need to get a better understanding okay so this is all about uh, um, application of electromagnetic magnetic induction in uh, alternative current generator and direct current generator and back EMA that is produced when um, when um, an electric motor is used to generate electric current okay back emf it is um, an emf that opposes the emf that produces its effects okay it's an, it's an emf that is in opposition to the emf that produces uh, its effects okay so um there are some questions no i didn't type them because they are objective and theory questions so i did not type them but i i just feel like uh, if there are questions that i just need to highlight the objective why question so you can just pay attention why i read that and then also try to reason along with me 
and then I will also give some answers. So I will just review some very few questions before I close this particular topic. The first question says that induced current depends on one. There are three numbers then, they will not pick the options. Induced current depends on one, number of turns in the coil. Remember that we discussed all this, number of turns in the coil, the strength of the magnet too, and the speed with which the magnet is plunged into the coil. So if you remember our discussions, if you remember our discussion on induced EMF, we said that the induced EMF depends on one, the number of turns in the coil. We said it depends on the strength of the magnet and it also depends on the speed with which the magnet is plugged into the coil. So all three options are correct. They said which of these are, is our false? That is the question. Which of these is our false? So none of them is false. So all of them are correct. So the right option here is uh, E. Okay. Because they have option A, B, C, D, E. A is one only, B is two only, C is two and three only, D is three only, and E, none of the above. So none of the above is uh, false. None of the above is false in that particular one. Then another question is to convert an alternative current dynamo into a direct current dynamo, what do we need to do? A, number of turns in the core is increased. B, strength of the feed magnet is increased. C, slip rings are replaced with split ring commutator. D, coil is worn on a soft iron armature. So if you follow the options very well, you find that I'm based on our discussion that we just had now. If you want to convert an alternative generator to a DC generator, you have to change the slip ring to split rings. So option C, is the right uh, option okay option c is the right option so i hope you are following okay so another question is which of the following operations will not lead to an increase in the induced emf in a coil of wire rotating between the poles of a magnet a Increasing the area. B. Increasing the strength of the magnets. C. Increasing the gap between the poles of the magnets. D. Increasing the number of turns in the coil. And E. Increasing the speed of rotation of the coil. The question was again is that which of the following operations will not lead to an increase in the induced emf in a coil of wire rotating between the poles of a magnet i said a increasing the area increasing the strength of the magnet increasing the gap between the poles of the magnets increasing the number of turns in the coil increasing the speed of rotation of the coil now if you look at all the options you find that increasing the area increasing the strength of the magnet Increase the number of turns in the coil and increase the speed of rotation of the coil will lead to increase in the induced EMF. So the only one that will not lead to it is increasing the gap between the poles of the magnets. So that is the right option, increasing the gap between the poles of the magnets. Okay, guys, so thank you so much. These are some wire questions I just saw and I needed to read them and review some of them with you. Please check your or other question papers you will see more questions to review all right so this way we are stopping this class and uh, before i leave please if you are not subscribed to our channel please subscribe give us a like give us a thumbs up invite your friends this is no my sign to source online let them come and enjoy what you are enjoying on youtube we thank you so much for being with us so far we have a lot of videos on different topics in physics. Please go through our uh, subscribe so that you can have access to our suite of lectures. Right? Go through any of the lectures that suits your class. If you are in SS1, you are in SS2, you are in SS3. There are different lectures that suit your class. And as we have said, we broke all the lectures into small, small segments so that it will be easy for you to identify which topic you want to actually listen to. Right? So please 
continue to give us positive comments and give us a like. We thank you for being with us. We hope to see you in our next class. Have a nice day.